First of all, thank you everybody for joining us uh, for today's session on enterprise network optimization, focusing on how Equinix speeds SAP as for HANA on Microsoft Azure. Our speakers today, Dave Anderson, our Global Alliance Director, and Brian Petit, Principal Solutions Architect from, from Equinix. And we have Jamie Schmidtke, Cloud Networking Specialist, Global Black Belt, and Evren Byrick, Cloud Solution Architecture, SAP on Azure, uh, joining us from Microsoft. Discussion topics are outlined here, uh, introducing Equinix for those of you who are not familiar, uh, and then talking about um, uh, Network optimization through Express Route at Equinix, and then we're going to address specifically the SAP on Azure solution. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dave Anderson to kick things off. Thanks, Chris. You know, the world of digital infrastructure never slows down and never shuts down. And while many businesses had to change how they operated during the global pandemic, very few slowed down. In reality, they had to speed up digital transformation to respond to the way their employees, partners, and customers interacted with them. Businesses of all sizes increasingly found that they needed their digital infrastructure to be more than a cost center, but it needs to be a competitive advantage. Nowhere is this more true than for those businesses that rely on their SAP deployments as business critical systems. Together, Equinix can micro and Microsoft can make this transformation happen. So at Equinix, we believe that digital infrastructure should be your greatest source of competitive advantage. But to get there, you need to bring together and interconnect the foundational infrastructure to power your success. We give digital leaders one global platform to combine all the right places, partners, and possibilities they need to succeed. And to get you to all the right places, we built the industry's largest global footprint of over 220 data centers across more than 63 metros, 26 countries, and five continents. This is the most resilient platform in the market with six nines of uptime and five layer physical security. And Equinix is recognized as the sustainability leader and was the first data center company to commit to supply 100% clean and renewable energy. This means that you can locate adjacent to public clouds like Microsoft Azure and networks to create the best of breed hybrid multi-cloud architectures. You can build physical or virtual infrastructures on the industry's most consistent and secure and sustainable platform. And you can deploy in proximity to customers, geographies and locations that matter. And that to do that to achieve low latency and high performance. To connect you to all the right partners, we've created the, the largest, most active global ecosystem of nearly 10,000 companies, including eight, over 1,800 networks and 2,000 or 2,900 cloud and IT service providers. These businesses are adding new connections with each other faster than the next 10 providers combined. And our award-winning portfolio of physical and virtual interconnection services, including the ubiquitous global reach, of Equinix Fabric software defined interconnection gives you easy access to this dynamic global ecosystem of enterprises and service providers. And what this means to you is that you can choose current vendors, best of breed providers, and regional specialists or innovators in the industry's largest ecosystem. You can connect in real time directly and privately to thousands of partners for increased performance, security, and scale and you can transact with ease, supply, consume, and integrate network storage and compute and applications over a single orchestrated interconnection fabric. Obviously, as you can see from this slide, the global reach of Equinix is unmatched. We cover the globe with our Equinix fabric and our award-winning data centers all over the place for interconnection to bring you together. And if you think about this in terms of if your current Azure customers or prospective Azure customers, we match up very well with where Azure is. So when we say we can bring you closer to the clouds, this is absolutely true. So when we talk about network optimization, we really think about that today's businesses are faced with complex fragmented infrastructure that comes from multiple providers spans private and public environments and is distributed across many geographies. 
They need help to simplify and bring it all together. As the world's digital infrastructure company, Equinix has built a trusted global platform that helps you interconnect and bring together the foundational digital infrastructure you need to fast track your digital advantage. When, we, when companies connect directly with each other via fabric or switch connectivity like Equinix Fabric in data center campus, they increase performance by reducing distance and reduce cost by eliminating networking expense. This is the power of interconnection. And when we talk about network optimization, we really talk about it in three aspects. The physics of proximity, network traffic cost can be reduced by 60% when two parties connect directly versus connecting by the internet or an MPLS provider. If you think about it, that 60% cost savings can then be used and applied to your actual workload deployment, your, your redeployment of SAP in this case. So your reduced network cost is helping to reduce the overall cost of your deployment. The economics of aggregation, a 30% reduction in latency can be achieved when two parties direct connect directly instead of connecting over distance using internet or, or an MPLS provider. And finally, the third part is the network effect. The value of interconnection is increasing with the number of available counterparties, creating that networking effect. More people together bring, makes it easier for you to directly connect to them. And when we talk about Equinix working with Microsoft Azure, we really think about that, that uh, the ability of Equinix to connect to Azure through Azure Express Route via our Equinix fabric to create connections between Azure data centers and infrastructure on your premises or in an Equinix co-location environment. And as you know, Express Route connections don't go over the public internet and they offer more reliability, faster speeds and lower latencies than typical connections. In some cases, using Express Route connections to transfer data between on-premises systems or co-located systems in Azure can give you significant cost benefits. With that, that's the Equinix story. And now I want to hand it over to Jamie Schmidke from Microsoft to talk more about uh, Azure networking. Jamie, it's all yours. Thanks, Dave. Um, hey, everybody, I'm Jamie Schmidke. I'm part of the Global Black Belt team here at Microsoft focused on networking solutions within Azure. Um, I covered the America's time zone. I've had the pleasure of working with Dave, Brian, and the rest of the Equinix team for a number of years and bringing all these different connectivity solutions to market with Equinix. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is our private connectivity offer that Dave neatly tied up or teed up for me. And first, it really begins with our global network infrastructure. So hopefully by now, most people understand that Microsoft has a pretty vast backbone infrastructure, you know, over 165,000 miles of fiber, on our over 180 edge sites, which we'll talk a little bit about what that means here in a second. Um, and that really powers the over 60 regions that we now have publicly announced, and that's growing as well, including our edge site uh, deployments. We've worked really hard to be able to expand not only our capacity within our backbone infrastructure, but also you know, deploying more infrastructure in facilities like Equinix to be able to get closer to those end users that are using these types of workloads um, within the Microsoft product family. So if you look at what this edge site means, sometimes people have their own uh, definitions around what edge stands for. Kind of at the core, it really means, you know, where a given content provider or a public cloud provider has uh, infrastructure for different network providers or even customers to interconnect. And in a lot of cases for us globally, those are in Equinix facilities. So whether you're looking to get access to things like, you know, Xbox Live, from your, your home network or maybe from a corporate network, things like Microsoft 365, or even different workloads within Azure, um, you know, your internet service provider will be interconnecting with us in a lot of cases through these Equinix facilities through our internet peering program. And we also have private connectivity as well, as Dave was saying, regarding Express Route, where different private network providers, whether it's you know uh, Ethernet services or MPLS services, you know, can interconnect with Microsoft in these Equinix facilities and offer express route services to end customers. So once you get that connectivity set up, whether it's coming over the internet through one of our you know, peering partners or through express route, 
uh, you're able to get access to Microsoft's backbone network, which then routes you in the most effective way possible to whatever Azure region or data center region that you have your workloads housed in. So in the case of let's say SAP, you could choose you know, different regions to be able to deploy that particular workload. There's also in certain locations, uh, a, an option called HANA large instance, where it's really you know, high memory intensive, uh, high compute intensive workloads for SAP and be able to get connectivity right next to where those stamps are located. Um, typically again, in Equinix facilities. Now, if we look at, you know, Express Route specifically and the private connectivity offer that we you know have in conjunction with Equinix, you know, there's a, a couple things to kind of go through. And to get a little bit into the weeds, uh, we look at where the customer's network is coming from, whether it's you know being delivered from a private you know MPLS provider, or in some cases, in a lot of what cases, they have physical gear within an Equinix facility where they're either connecting through you know, Equinix Fabric or connecting to our routers directly, which we'll talk about those different options here in a second. But once that is done, you know, a customer can easily just log into their Azure portal, create an express route circuit. And in most cases, especially connecting in through Equinix Fabric, we've already pre-provisioned the infrastructure between Microsoft's routers and the Equinix Fabric. So really it's a self-service type experience where you could create that virtual circuit have it placed on those physical port pairs that already been pre-established, and then essentially just do logical configurations at that point. Um, so you could create logical configurations to either what we call Azure private peering, which is um, a set of BGP sessions. And of course we have multiple paths for availability. That's how we're, uh, from a Microsoft perspective, able to offer SLA on availability at 99.95%. .95%. Again, operating more at enterprise uh, scale and being able to connect to Azure Private Peering, which allows you to get access to those infrastructure as a service workloads, your, your VM deployments, or you know, in some cases you have things called Azure Private Link, which take platform services and privatize those IP addresses. So then you could route over Express Route in a full transit type of manner. But there's also another peering called Microsoft Peering. So Microsoft Peering allows you to get access to those publicly available services that are advertised over public IPs. Um, those platform services such as Blob Storage, Cosmos DB, uh, SQL uh, on Azure, um, or even you know, looking at uh, different options around Dynamics, right? Being able to advertise Dynamics privately over uh, Express Route. And then Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Now, uh, this is the caveat I always tell people regarding Microsoft 365 or Office 365 is that while we do still offer private connectivity to that service, you know, Office in particular has been designed to work over the internet. So in a lot of cases, it's better for you to in interact with that service over your internet connectivity and optimize that as best possible. Um, because some of the components do not operate over private connectivity. And in some cases, um, it, you might run into things like asymmetric routing um, with Office. And you don't, unlike Azure, where you explicitly tell uh, the our cloud where you want these workloads to be housed, you know, with Office, um, it's more dynamic and not necessarily in control. It's more of a software as a service platform. There is an approval process. Um, it's aka.ms slash ER request is the website that you could look at to, you know, fill out some information and petition approval if you're like in a regulated industry. They have a compliance or regulatory re requirement. Or if it's um, a situation where you're in a certain area of the world, um, we see this typically in Asia, where internet connectivity is just not sufficient for uh, an office deployment, we can see if ExpressRoute has a tangible technical benefit for you. Um, so there's a lot more to get into on that, but uh, for the sake of time, we're gonna move on and talk a little bit about the deployment models of ExpressRoute. So, what I would call the service provider model on the left-hand side of this slide um, really focuses on three main areas. One, the cloud exchange or co-location area, and Equinix being one of the you know, founding partners for the Equinix partner e ecosystem really plays nicely into the cloud exchange model through their Equinix fabric. So customers can you know, connect in through the Equinix fabric, fabric again with the pre-provision ports that we have between Equinix and Microsoft and then just logically configure your connections to Microsoft or you know, other resources that are offered through the Equinix fabric. Um, other providers uh, that you know, interact in more of a transport capacity offer point-to-point -point services 
So sometimes they connect in through the Equinix fabric, sometimes they connect in through Microsoft routers directly, but you're able to just get kind of a dummy point to point connection um, from those transport providers. And then finally, you know, those MPLS managed layer three providers provide that any to any connection where they've already done a lot of the automation work in conjunction with Microsoft to be able to automate the advertisements of those IPs into your existing MPLS mesh. Um, so there's some providers that you know, do offer those type of services as well. In most cases, we see customers leveraging uh, the options on the far left, whether it's a cloud exchange model or a point-to-point -point, uh, circuit model. Um, but now we have a new offer, newer offer, I should say, it's starting to get to the point where I can't say it's new anymore, um, called Express Route Direct, where in most cases our routers are in those Equinix facilities and customers can order or have their transport provider order a cross connect with Equinix to get to our routers directly. So then that way they have full control over the physical ports, not just the virtual circuits that are on top of those physical ports. So when we're talking about Express Route Direct, we have options around 10 or 100 gigabit interconnects. Again, two for redundancy, and then you could create those virtual circuits on top of those physical interconnects um, and have the same peering experience that you would have on the service provider model where you're using Azure private peering for your uh, infrastructure as a service workloads or Microsoft peering for those platform as a service workloads or with approval, things like Microsoft 365. Um, so we typically see customers, once they start to get into the one gigabit and higher discussions where it starts to make sense to maybe think about using Express Route Direct. Um, anything, you know, let's say maybe one gig or less, probably the best option for you, especially, you know, the quickest to market, to quickest to get turned up is to go through something like the Equinix fabric in that cloud exchange model. Now, one other thing that's important for, especially for SAP deployment, is something called Express Route Local. This is kind of a new construct as well where it's really focused at the virtual circuit level. So whether you're using service provider ports or connecting through Equinix Fabric, let's say, or you're connecting through Express Route Direct, you can create virtual circuits that are deemed Express Route Local, where you can see by the table here, and this table is constantly growing as well, um, you're looking at the Express Route location that has to be matched up with a given Azure region where your workloads are. With Express Route Local, there's no egress charges, so if you're you know, maybe have an ETL process with SAP where you're pulling a lot of data out of the SAP environment back to on-prem or you're sending a lot of data back up to SAP. You know, the sending of data is never charged. You know, we don't charge for data getting sent to our cloud, but, you know, data getting taken out, that's where Express Route Local might be of a benefit to you where you don't have to worry about those variable egress charges. So in terms of disaster recovery, um, what we see, especially in SAP deployments, are multiple express route locations, multiple express route circuits created, and then this what we call this bow tie configuration between multiple regions. So whether it's communicating with um, you know uh, US East or US West or you know a different paired region set, uh, you're able to create those interconnects over our backbone network to the express route circuits, and then through theoretically the Equinix fabric going back to on-prem using your transport providers. So this is something that is becoming more and more uh, popular, especially when people start, start off with the cloud and maybe start off with one express route circuit in a given location, but now they're starting to uh, create multiple express route circuits. And then in certain metros, we have multiple express route locations to service kind of this availability zone construct where we're offering similar latency, um, you know, uh, close proximity to, you know, each other in terms of the interconnect, but far enough away where, you know, from a DR perspective, we're still safe in the event that um, one of those sites were to have an issue. One other thing that we see is part of this, you know, what I would call the bow tie configuration is the ability to use the Microsoft Backbone Network as transit. And that's something we call Express Route Global Reach. So even though it, we do call it Global Reach, which can be used over our Global Backbone Network, we could also use it at a regional level within like a given time zone, let's say like the Americas, like you know, using it just in the United States, for example. So what this does, it actually peers the virtual circuits with one another. So then it starts to share its routes that it's learning from both on-premise locations. So you'll be able to use our backbone network to be able to get full transit from two on-prem locations and essentially use our backbone wherever it needs to go as transit. So whether it's something that you could use as a backup to your you know, typical terrestrial uh, network 
as kind of like a friendly uh, backup without necessarily have to introducing another vendor. Um, or, you know, using some of these, what we call Azure dedicated workloads like SAP and Azure VMware solutions or AVS to be able to get access to those stamps as well. So to kind of put this in perspective, you know, you've got a similar situation where maybe you've got workloads in multiple Azure regions, you've got um, uh, SAP HANA large instance deployment in two separate locations as well. And how do we get all, all that working together? So we do leverage global reach to be able to peer those virtual um, circuits together and then able to route that over our backbone network, whether it's to the SAP stamps directly for HANA large instance, or maybe different levels of SAP that are you know, housed within the Azure regions themselves. But essentially you're able to get full routing, you know, whether it's to an Azure region or these SAP HANA large instances you know, over these express route circuits using express route global reach. So I think that's it for me. Um, I'm going to hand it back over uh, to uh, Evren uh, to talk a little bit more specifics around SAP on Azure. Thank you very much, uh, Equinox team. And uh, my name is Evren Bayruk. I'm an SAP on Azure Cloud Solution Architect from Microsoft uh, Success Team Organization. And I primarily work with Microsoft partners and I help them with the um, SAP on Azure implementation, design, and architecture, and topologies. So this actually, this is the slide um, which, is, which is talking about the overall Microsoft, um, uh, uh, Microsoft value proposition from compute point of view that um, Microsoft has been certifying the D-series, E-series, M-series, and MV2s. And uh, lately, we also just did the um, uh, a, MSV2 type of VMs uh, certification for SAP workloads. So Microsoft customers are actually leveraging different SKUs based on their requirements. For example, um, we are providing our customers with mix, uh, mix of sizes to get the best price and performance for each workload. So if they're running their SAP on SQL or SAP on Oracle, we are recommending uh, different VMs or we are not going to necessarily going to recommend the same VMs that we are providing for the customers SAP HANA workloads such as using the M series uh, VM SKU. So what we do, we are receiving the customer's requirements via the early watch alert reports and sizing reports the customers are providing to Microsoft and Microsoft partners. We meticulously go through all the requirements of our customers so then the recommendations that we are providing to our customers are really addressing their needs. So when deploying a workload on Azure VMs, Microsoft receives the customer's requirements thoroughly and we are not missing anything. So that's why the recommendation that Microsoft provides purely aligns with the customer's requirements because this technology is going to be beyond their firewall, it's not going to be um, behind their firewall. So they also ask questions on the availabilities and how these technologies can be deployed on Azure Cloud. So what we are telling our customers is that they can create the VMs with an availability set to provide high availability to their SAP applications. So using availability sets, these customers can ensure that during an either an outage or maintenance event that require a reboot, at least one VM is available. So our SLA is about one instance. And then what we are saying is that once we are looking at the overall SLA, when a client is not leveraging the availability set, then we're looking at the um, industry uh, standard single VM SLA, which is 99.9%. So this is usually not fitting the requirements of the customers. So what we are saying is if a client is looking at uh, the availability or the high availability, the, the minimum they need to start with is going to be the availability set so that they can actually just deploy these VMs up to 20 update domains, and these VMs are not going to be updated at the same time. So this is this is going to be providing the customer with 99.95% SLA. But if a client is looking at something more than 99.95% SLA, so then we are talking about the availability zone um, in a region, which is a combination of the fault domain and update domain. For example, if a client is creating three or more VMs across the zones in the availability uh, in an Azure region. 
So these VMs are going to be effectively distributed across three up three cloud domains and this so the Azure platform is going to recognize this distribution across update domains to make sure that the VMs in different zones are not going to be scheduled to be updated at the same time. So this is something that is requiring more SLA from Microsoft side. Some customers are choosing it. Some customers are still going with the availability set, which is a, in layman's term, side-by-side, -side, high available technology, such as like uh, pairing the HANA uh, on-premises or traditional HANA uh, box with another one to provide HA for the SAP HANA system. So when a client is coming to Microsoft and asking Microsoft about these SLAs, again, Microsoft provides different set of SLAs looking at availability set and availability zones. But if a client is looking at through DR solution that we are providing the customers with uh, cross-region replication CRR technology to actually make sure that this SAP HANA or the Oracle database using the Oracle Data Guard or HANA system replication uh, is used to replicate this SAP HANA database asynchronously to the DR side. So Microsoft gives all these uh, different uh, HA and DR scenarios based on the customer's requirements. So the, the bottom line of the slide is, although that we provide all the slide, all these um, uh, features such as the single VM SLA, availability set SLA, zone SLA, and we are also providing real true DR replication. We really get the requirements of the customers. So the solution that my teams within Microsoft and also our partners, Microsoft certified partners provide to our customers are, are aligning with Microsoft and SAP best practices, which align with the customers overall um, uh, HA and DR requirements. So another aspect of the, the SAP on Azure and then from the storage perspective is very important as, imp is as important as the compute because from the storage perspective, vast majority of SAP deployments are based on the premium SSD. So our customers are really getting the, the value of the premium SSD based on the um, increased demand from the customers on the throughput and IOPS requirements. Microsoft decided to also recommend the premium disk for the smaller systems for the customers IOPS and throughput requirements. But again, based on the customer's requirements, they can still leverage the standard SSDs. But from the um, uh, maximum performance perspective, Microsoft provides our customers with minimum premium SSDs. So some customers are also leveraging the uh, ultra disk technology for the SAP workloads. So as we from Microsoft, as we know that SAP HANA is certified to run on the premium SSD, ultra disk and ANF. We also made sure that the configurations which Microsoft are Microsoft is using are in accordance with the TDI storage guidelines and will ensure the hardware configuration check tool KPIs are going to be fulfilled for the customers requirements. So which means just like the network requirements of the customers, just like the the the, um, uh, the VM compute um, utilization requirements of the customers, Microsoft Cloud Solution Architects working with our partners are going to make sure that their storage requirements are also addressed. So from the Azure management uh, perspective for SAP, Microsoft knows that managing the customer's IT environment, both in the cloud and on-premises, is very complex and is challenging. So Microsoft has a complete set of services and tools in Azure to help these customers to manage the full life cycle of the, the security and management. So many customers report cost savings when they shift to running in Azure. So they are asking questions on how they can leverage the Azure technology to be able to save money and they can actually just optimize their resources, they can deploy faster. And then again, like I said in the previous slide, how they can achieve the best in-class scenarios for the disaster recovery as a service and backup and archiving. So Microsoft is providing from the cost perspective, cost savings perspective, we are providing them with the um, OPEX model so that they're gonna be able to eliminate the CAPEX, so the expenses and expense are going to be reduced and then they can actually just focus on their core priorities and then they are not going to make an upfront investment uh, to, to deploy their SAP workloads. So Microsoft also provides uh, very vast guidance into the 
um, uh, resources optimization. We are providing our customers with built-in cost management tools. And then we are providing our customers with the, the um, uh, Azure automation to deploy it faster. And then again, ASR technology for SAP application layer replication over to the DR side or using availability zones or cross region. And then also ANF technology, ANF cross region restore technology for SAP HANA database, uh, Snap, uh, Snap mirror technology to be able to replicate the SAP HANA database to the DR side using either ANF or using the HANA system replication uh, using it asynchronously. Microsoft provides different um, uh, different technologies and flexibility to help our customers achieve their DR requirements. And again, from the backup and archiving perspective, Microsoft storage accounts are providing our customers with cold, warm, and hot tier um, archiving technologies. So we are giving all the tips. We are giving all the recommendations on storing the data and how the customer can use Azure Backup, for example, to use the snapshot functionality for databases, you know, from bigger than eight terabytes, and how they can actually be using the streaming backup uh, for databases which are going to be eight terabyte and you know less. So all the guidance are being provided to the customers from the um, deployment perspective and also cost optimization perspective. Microsoft knows that within each solution area, Microsoft customers, they're going to need to manage multiple security categories to effectively reduce their risk. So what Microsoft does, we are providing our customers with a broad portfolio on identity access management, application and data security, network security, threat protection, and security management. When a client is moving to Azure, they're getting the entire security tools and technologies to make sure that this data, the SAP data and SAP application and access to the SAP application from outside, from inside, and then all the tools are being leveraged and all the technologies are leveraged. If a customer requires a UDR from point A to point B, it is provided. If the customer needs to have Azure route server, which is providing them with a broader security aspect. And then it is it is actually just being added to the overall um, uh, solution portfolio for the customer. Microsoft, we are building our security solutions up on a queue of uh, principles. These are like moving from assumptions to explicit verification, adopting a policy-based list privilege access model, and designing with the assumption that every element of the systems can be breached. So this is zero trust security. And then these are the key principles of the zero trust um, security, providing a modern security framework to manage the complexity of the customer's um, uh, organization. Microsoft does not leave our customers alone on this journey. So we are given all these tools that you see on the screen. And then we make sure that the infrastructure, network applications, data, devices, and identities are all aligning with the customer's requirements. Even if, if in, even if a customer does not provide us with their insight, Microsoft Cloud Solution Architects ask questions to our customers whether or not the SAP security is actually considered as part of the deployment. If not, Microsoft security teams and networking teams team up to help these customers with the overall uh, network infrastructure application data, devices, and identities, identity access management, RBAC rules, ABAC rules, and then we help our customers with the entire portfolio. So with this slide, I am now going to turn it over to Brian. So, hey everyone, I'm just gonna wrap up really our conversation around SAP on Azure and Azure networking with, um, with how Equinix brings that all together. So naturally that's through Equinix Fabric, um, and it's really at the heart of our our overall platform um, and, and brings really the ability for our customers to do everything inside of our data centers and outside of our data centers through ecosystems that um, have been built uh, within the Equinix platform. So Equinix Fabric is our software defined networking offering that really brings together Express Route and a whole host of connectivity for our customers. Um, it gives our customers more control over how and where they connect um, providing versatile bandwidth and a whole host of options in terms of connectivity. 
it really increases our customer's agility to connect to naturally Microsoft Azure and any other fabric participant, including themselves. It brings uh, some minimized security threats naturally because it provides a dedicated connection and completely bypasses the public internet. In addition to that, it's built for scale naturally around provisioning, easy provisioning on through an online portal that we provide, um, allows our customers to easily modify networks and scale as they need to, along with reliable performance through direct connectivity, really improving our customers' app performance and creating a, a better end user experience for customers migrating to cloud. Finally, really from a global availability standpoint, we've seen a couple of maps today and actually map very closely to how Microsoft set up from a, a overall network um, with 40 plus locations for Equinix Fabric today. I think we're up to around 47 locations today. And so here's kind of a snapshot of what that looks like. Um, all those uh, red circled black dots, uh, upwards of 47 locations where we provide access to Equinix Fabric. Um, in terms of Microsoft, we provide access in 32 metro areas to ExpressRoute um, and actually another seven markets inside the US to Azure Government Cloud for government and federal government workloads. So Fabric and Express Software footprint continues to grow year over year. We constantly add to this footprint, um, naturally as both Equinix and Microsoft expand into new markets. So if we take a look here, just kind of getting back to our value around helping customers expand their Azure workloads to include SAP HANA. As they embark on their SAP to Azure journey, naturally they need to deploy highly performant and scalable architectures. Um, network latency can definitely impact our customers' SAP application performance. So really achieving the lowest possible network latency is a priority. Platform Equinix and Fabric enable direct access and communication from a secure environment to the customer SAP HANA instances. So, you know, kind of looking at this overall architecture, naturally you bring another, a number of things to bear in, in terms of what customers are trying to accomplish up in Azure and, and utilizing SAP. Actually, one of those is legacy on-premise systems like production database can be connected to Azure sitting inside our data centers, along with backup, disaster recovery, or business continuity solutions between on-prem and cloud. So we really provide our customers the ability to you know, maintain legacy systems they need to around regulatory or compliance needs, while still transforming you know, to cloud-based services to lower costs, um, improve their productivity, and enable better scalability and security of their SAP systems. You know, adding to what um, both Evan and, and Jamie talked about in terms of, you know, the different offerings of SAP on Azure, one of those is SAP HANA large instance. And, um, you know, these are large bare metal deployments that Azure's created to provide really dedicated to their customers. It's server hardware embedded in larger stamps containing compute, networking and storage that are units that, um, as Everidge was talking about, really go up to very large deployments, 480 CPU cores, 24 terabytes of memory. So Equinix not only provides the large fabric access from a bandwidth standpoint, up to 10 gig um, from an overall bandwidth to express route on up to 100 gig ports off of fabric, but we also um, you know, have a lot of these deployments sitting inside our, uh, our facilities. So it really provides the optimal low latency access for our customers. And um, you know, these were chosen by Microsoft to deploy into our facilities because of that proximity we have to overall Azure. So it really gives you kind of an idea of the overall integration that Equinix has with Microsoft and Azure and kind of provides a little additional insight into that added value that we bring to our Azure customers. So I'll close with a brief introduction to another product that uh, Equinix currently offers, in addition to our Equinix fabric and the overall networking capabilities that we have, um, and that's our Network Edge offering. We've expanded our networking solutions beyond the physical data center and physical interconnection, really into virtualized equipment offerings and connectivity. So kind of working left to right here, you know, Network Edge is Equinix's network virtualization offering for customers composed of three different elements. One of those is a catalog of virtual network function for customers to choose from. So naturally, as you can see from the logos here, we've teamed up with very well-known vendors to offer branded industry-leading network functions. The ability for our customers to deploy virtually in the locations that they need to through that NFV infrastructure and to run those edge devices. 
and finally pre-integrated um, connectivity for our customers with the interconnection ecosystems that I mentioned earlier on platform Equinix. And um, you know, this includes Equinix Fabric. So this is an integrated system between the ability for our customers to use Fabric to connect to, um, to Azure and to the whole host of uh, ecosystems, but also to do it in a virtual manner. So through the same online portal as Equinix Fabric, Network Edge can be configured and ordered to provide a, really a more cloud-like experience for our customers' networking needs. So this really provides you know, that virtual infrastructure that scales for our customers, really a difference in speed to market, right? So now we're not necessarily deploying or needing to deploy um, hardware and going through a capital environment. This is an expense and OPEX uh, ability for customers to do it in a virtualized manner, really on-demand ordering and configuration. Um, it does provide more very predictable costs and pay by the drink pricing, which also looks different from those kind of traditional networking uh, um, offerings, and it's naturally an expanding global presence to uh, to extend our customers' reach. So, you know, as you can see, there's it's kind of a snapshot of our stable of partners we have on Network Edge today. You'll recognize all the names from Cisco to Juniper, um, with both virtual routers and SD WAN offerings. Um, so there are several other SD WAN providers um, like Silver Peak and Fortinet. And we also provide firewall and security offerings from Palo Alto and Checkpoint. So Network Edge really provides that highly resilient kind of design, um, bring your own licenses or buy a license from Equinix, and easy and fast ordering of virtual appliances that are directly integrated with Fabric. This provides our customers the ability to connect to ExpressRoute and to Azure, you know, without deploying physical hardware into our data centers, which is definite change and in innovation from what you would think of a traditional co-location provider like Equinix. So these are kind of further examples of the innovation we bring, um, Equinix can bring in terms of integrating with Microsoft to really continually make it easier and quicker for our customers to transform their network architecture as they migrate those mission critical workloads like you've seen around SAP to Azure. So with that, I'll hand things off to Dave to wrap it up. Thanks, Brian. Uh, next steps. Um, if you'd like, you, you can schedule a digital edge briefing strategy uh, with an Equinix team. That'll be an Equinix assessment of, of customer environment um, that really is around looking at your edge strategy and how it fits in. And then we can provide Indian guidance. If, you, if you'd like to schedule one of those, you can do it at the email address provided there, info.microsoft at equinix.com. And with that, um, I am happy to uh, close this out. I thank you for your attendance today. And uh, remember, uh, any questions you might have, you can uh, reach out to any of us here on the webcast and the info.microsoft at equinix.com. Thank you for your time today.